have all spent the last year with less people in our inner circles, physically speaking, surrounded by mostly immediate family and maybe co-workers. The pandemic has exposed cracks in many of our friendships, whether it's from personal or political beliefs shared on social media, as relationship experts point to evolving perspectives that can actually change how we see someone. This has perhaps happened with you. Divisive thinking may be an ultimate friendship killer. Well, Dr. Robin Dunbar is a professor of psychology at Oxford University in London. He is a world-renowned uh, evolutionary psychologist who has written multiple books on friendships, relationships, and was recently featured in an interview in The Atlantic discussing his most recent work called Friends, Understanding the Power of Our Most Important Relationships. Uh, can you talk about some of the uh, priority points in this latest book that you have put out and what we're learning about our friendships and how many we have. Well, the numbers haven't really changed uh, for the last 25 years. You still have a wider circle of about 150 friends and family, includes extended family members. And you still have five really close friends and family, usually kind of split between the two. Um, uh, which we call the shoulders to cry on friends. These five inner core friends are the ones that really matter because they're the ones that will drop everything uh, and come to pick you up when your life falls apart. Um, you know, most other people will need a bit of persuasion. <laughs> you say so that, they're the critical ones. Yeah. yeah, and with that, you say that friendships are very fragile when it comes to like an emergency situation, as you just referred to. But relatives, they're bound by different relationship standards. Explain that. You, you sit in a big spider's web of interrelationships between all your family members, and that spider's web kind of keeps everybody locked in together. And of course, friendships tend to be a bit more one-on-one, -on -one, so you don't have so many interconnections with them. And that makes them kind of fragile in the sense that nobody else is sort of fighting to keep them in place for you. You've got to do all the work. Let me take a quick break right here. And when we come back on the other side, I do want to talk about the science behind our friendship, because not only are you and are we speaking about relationships, but there is some science behind this as well. I'll uh, be back in just two minutes. We'll talk about that. Continuing the conversation between myself and Dr. Robin Dunbar, who is a professor of psychology at Oxford University in London, world-renowned for his work, written multiple books, and the most recent book uh, called Friends, Understanding the Power of Our Most Important Relationships. I don't think of science, Dr. Dunbar, when I think of my friends, but there is very much some science that goes into this. Um, can you talk about the clinical kind of breakdown numbers data and circles of our friendships well the the um central issue i think is what's known as dunbar's number so this is the number of people you can hold meaningful relationships with at any one time uh, people come and go from that number but the number remains fairly stable at about 150 people usually for us it, with our small family sizes in, in the industrial west um, that'll be half extended family, half friends in the usual meaning of the sense friends, but we count them all together. And that 150 really is divided into a series of layers of friendships. And there are really four key um, circles, if you like, of friendship, that inner core of five uh, shoulders to cry on friends that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a layer at about 15, which is normally referred to as the sympathy group. Um, uh, they're the people who we really feel very close to. Um, beyond that, there's a layer at 50, which I kind of think of as your sort of yard party friends. If you were thinking of having a barbecue uh, one, one, one weekend, you, you would draw on the people from that 50 circle as, as the people to, to invite. Whereas the 150 layer is what I sometimes refer to as your bar mitzvah, wedding and funeral friends. They're all the people that will turn up to those once in a lifetime events um, uh, because you mean something to them. What are the seven factors then we use to evaluate if someone is, has the potential to become a friend? I have to imagine, and I haven't looked at, at the 
answers that you've given on this, but I have to imagine trust is a really high priority on that list. Well, trust is the thing that underpins all of them. Yes. Uh, it, it, uh, you really, um, you know, all 150 members of your extended social circle uh, depend on, on the trust that exists between you and your willingness to reciprocate to each other. The dialect that you speak, the um, place where you grew up, not so much where you were born, but where you grew up and learnt who you were and which community you belong to and how to be a member of that community. Um, uh, the kind of educational trajectory you've had, you know, if we've all been to, you and I have been to uh, uh, the same uh, school, um, uh, you know, that's, that's definitely a tick for us. If we've done the same degree course when we were at that school, that's a double tick for us. If we were there at the same time, that's three ticks, if you like. Um, the, the shared hobbies and interests, if we like the same things, shared moral and political and religious views, uh, shared um, uh, musical tastes, uh, and that turns out to be very important for making friends mm. out of strangers. If you share musical taste with a stranger, um, that's definitely a big plus uh, to the possibility that, that, that you would make a good friendship there. And last but not least is the uh, shared sense of humor. So if you like the same um, stand-up comics or, or, or whatever it may be, you know, that's, that's definitely um, uh, a good thing for a friendship. Well, makes you look, makes you happy. Yeah, yeah, and when people make us laugh, and that's why so often when people say what makes a good mate, women often say it is the humor. Um, yes, good sense of humor, G-S-O-H, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate this. I wish we had more time, Dr. Dunbar, but I will certainly be asking you uh, to come back if you can. I would like to cultivate our friendship, sir. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dunbar. We'll be back.